Hey everybody, this is Andy from Tennis Euphoria and today I'm bringing you my review of the Technofiber T-Fight 305 RS. So let's start by checking out the racket itself. Sure you'll all agree that it is a very nice looking racket and whilst compared sort of side to side to its predecessor the 305 XTC when you look at them next to each other it looks sort of pretty subtle in terms of the design changes when you look further up close there's some really nice touches on the handle uh, the quality of the paint job looks really good but aside from cosmetics when you look at the specs they're very very similar in fact pretty much the same let's check them out um, unstrung you've got a 98 square inch head 18 by 19 string pattern same as before 305 unstrung weight same as before the unique point about this racket is that balance point lots of weight in the head same as before at 32.5 the only difference that i can see really on paper is that this racket is stiffer uh, 70 few points stiffer to compared to the XTC 305 so quality control, uh, I had a few of the XTC 305s. You probably remember from my old video, they were pretty close actually when they were all strung up with overgrip, etc. Really happy to report that my RS came totally on spec. So 305 unstrung as you can see with that 32.5 balance point. Then when I compared the XTC 305 with the new RS with dampener, strings, overgrip, I'm really pleased to report again that they were pretty much exactly the same. So I had 330 grams of weight with a take and swing weight of 333 on the RS and 332 on the XTC 305 balance point both at 33.3. So I think that further shows us that ultimately the changes here are pretty subtle. So let's have a look at what has changed with regards to sort of technology in the racket. So it still has some neat features, which I've commented on before with regards to the previous racket. You have the armor cap, which ultimately gives you a bit of confidence to scratch it along the floor, uh, extends its shelf life, I think, a little bit. You have those interesting grommets that really help you out when it comes to stringing, if you do string. And the basis of the racket seems pretty similar. You have Dynacore and XTC construction, again, in this racket, which, according to Technofiber, gives good stability and also good control. So the only real difference here is in the beam and that is where the RS wording comes in and that relates to this new sort of five edge shape to it. But then when you hold it up next to the XTC 305, you can see that it's got, a, got that slightly different material along the edges and makes it a bit sharper. But understand that within the beam, there is a difference. There is some sort of foam uh, in the beam. And I guess that is what's leading to possibly that slightly uh, bigger RA. Uh, it certainly felt a little bit more dampened. Um, not sure though that that was a good thing uh, for me. So taking the RS on court then, and I guess no surprise really that it plays quite similar to the 305 XTC. And broadly speaking, I mean, this is a racket that has very similar characteristics. Those characteristics would be, it's certainly very stable. It is obviously relatively hard to swing with the healthy swing weights above 330. It's not going to get pushed around on the baseline, that's for sure. And it does give you a nice bit of plow through, which is one of the benefits of the racket. I always felt that the XTC was sort of good from the baseline in as much as it offered you great options when you were defending. You could take short swings and you get a lot on the ball and ultimately get it back and get it deep. Certainly also you could transition from defense to attack pretty well and that is the case with this RS2. I mean ultimately they're pretty similar and I think that 1819 string pattern is quite an interesting pattern in as much as it does give you that little bit of control and rarely does the ball sort of fly on you despite that good plow so that's a good thing. But just like its predecessor the XTC 305 the RS has the same potential challenges in as much as the 1819 does offer you quite a low launch angle and also if you combine that with the swing weight then often I always felt that there's a little bit of a kind of drag and unless you're really strong and powerful 
potentially you could be a little bit late on the ball. Um, certainly for me, that string pattern, if I don't get the strings right in the XTC or indeed the RS, there is the potential when I look to hit out an attack of the ball ultimately going into the net. And that is something that I very much experienced with the RS. So has the RS sort of made any difference to the line with regards to that new beam? Well, sort of hitting the ball both forehand and backhand side, I would say that you can notice the subtle difference in the stiffness. However, jury is out for me as to whether that is a good thing. Certainly the racket remains a really good racket from the baseline. Certainly this is kind of pure strike-esque. Um, I've hit the 1619 pure strike a lot and there is differences to this racket in as much as the launch angle is lower with this racket, you probably get better control. I would imagine, however, that this play is very similar to the 1820 pure strike. And ultimately, if you're a baseline player, I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. But I do think the change in the beam has amplified an area of the racket that I sort of struggled with when I was playing with the XTC 305. So this is a little bit more dampened than the XTC 305. And with that bigger stiffness, for me, you lose a little bit of kind of touch and feel and I never felt the XTC 305 was the best racket for your real sort of subtle cute drop shots and I think that is very much the case with the RS. For the couple of points more stiffness I wasn't really getting any difference in power but happy to report that certainly for me it wasn't causing any comfort issues but then I'm quite mindful that I really look after myself. I am a strength and conditioning coach and a PT in my day job, so I know how to look after my shoulder and my arms. So I'm lucky I don't really have that as a concern. I do wonder, however, whether the swing weight with the RS and now with that sort of creeping up stiffness, I think that's something to watch for people with this racket. And when I played some points, uh, mainly kind of fed points at this stage uh, from the baseline, certainly all of those uh, feelings were cemented. So it is solid from the baseline. You get ample plow, it's easy to hit depth. I'm not sure that that necessarily allows you to sort of really hit with full strokes, however. Uh, when you start to really hit out and look for your spots, that's where you've got to be careful. That launch angle and also the fundamental swing weight of the racket can mean that you can be a little bit late on contact. And just like the XTC, the strings were so important for me to play effectively with this RS. So initially I strung it up with Technofiber Black Code at around about 54 pounds. And whilst that was a relatively comfortable response, I was finding that I was hitting into the net uh, a little bit, not by a lot, but just when I was hitting out for hopeful winner shots or really looking to hit targets, I just clipped the top of the net. That did make a difference when I strung with um, different sort of edged polys. So I found that um, Dunlop Black Widow works particularly well in this racket and also MSV Hex I thought worked really well too. And I think those sort of sharper edge polys in this racket might be required just to give the ball a little bit of lift over the net if you have um, sort of non-Western grips like I do. Where the racket can help you out is on return of serve, I always found. Um, you could return a lot of the server's power pretty easy just by sort of short take backs and kind of stabbing at the ball. You know you're gonna get a good deep return. That's the same with this racket. Also found you could sort of pick balls up low on defense really well with this racket. There's ample stability at net, as you can imagine, um, with that balance point and you can get for me good power on serve I mean there's big plow through in the racket and with good technique it offers you plenty of power on serve so the racket has a lot going for it however I guess the couple of aspects that make the racket sort of really unique are potentially its downsides and other things that you should consider if you're in the market for a racket like this they are, first of all, that swing weight. I mean, this is a hefty racket to swing despite its 305 unstrung weight. And I think this racket is a really good example of how balance point is so important when it comes to swing weight and finding the right sort of swinging pattern racket-wise for your game. 
Also, the 1819 string pattern, I think ultimately is a really good pattern. The thing you've got to be aware of though is that launch angle. The 1819 probably does sit somewhere in between the 1619 and 1820 setups, unsurprisingly, but I do find you've got to watch out for that launch angle. And as I said before, I think you've got to spend a bit of time with string setups with this racket. And in that uniqueness, there is its other potential weakness. So now with this RA sort of creeping up uh, in the racket, then ideally you'd want, I think, a sort of shape, sharp edge poly in the racket. And then you're potentially putting together a couple of aspects that could be damaging on the arm long term. So I think you've got to be careful there. I also think you've got to be pretty strong, powerful and fit to be considering this racket because ultimately it is quite a lot to swing with that swing weight and potentially long matches, you might start to notice that. So there you have it, the RS305 from Technofiber, lovely looking. It's definitely going after, I think, the pure stripe market. And I think that by making it stiffer, they are really kind of laying their marketplace to go after that pure strike with this racket. Whether or not that's a good thing, I don't know. I think that will come down to personal preference. I can certainly see that Babolat users, uh, particularly the Pure Strike and Pure Drive line users, will really like this racket. I don't think it offers the same sort of spin effect that you get from the arrows. So I can't see uh, them stealing many arrow users to this racket. The slight disappointment for me is that the reason that I like the XTC305 is that you did used to pick up that lower RA for me. So you kind of had the benefits of a pure strike type racket and then you just felt that it was a little bit more comfortable. And I also used to get, I think, slightly better touch and feel from the XTC305 than I did with this. Hope you enjoyed the review. I have noticed that in my last video I did get more likes than usual so I will put together um, a summary of the racket that I picked but sort of taking on board the quite passionate feedback that I got from some that they really didn't care about what racket I was using what I'll try and do is make that video a little bit more of a kind of comparison around the different 1820s in case somebody's interested in an 1820 at the moment ultimately I was very lucky to have been able to hit with a lot of 1820s to arrive at my decision. So that's how I'll try and frame up that um, video and that's the next one to come. Thanks for watching and see you soon.